In the journey of personal development, one of the first things to learn is the lesson of the seasons. Life and business is like the changing seasons. One of the best ways to illustrate what's happening in your business, what's happening in your life, is this illustration of the changing seasons. Frank Sinatra used to sing, life is like the seasons. Now here's what's next. You cannot change the seasons. One of the things to, you know, come to grips with is what you can change and what you cannot change. You cannot change the seasons, but here's the next phrase, but you can change yourself. Therein lies the chance to live an extraordinary life, learning to change yourself. In an economic sense, my mentor put it this way, to climb the ladder of success as high as you wish to climb, here's the key, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said if you work hard on your job, you can make a living, which is fine. But if you work hard on yourself, you could make a fortune, which is super fine. Then let's put it in philosophical language. Two things on economics philosophically. Here's the first one I learned. Your income is primarily determined by your philosophy. You know, I didn't learn that until I was 25 years old. They never taught it in high school. I went to college one year and never heard it. Your income is primarily determined by your philosophy, not the economy. Then when I finally understood that, I got excited about it because I knew I couldn't change the economy, but I was assured that I certainly could change my philosophy. And I did that. And here's the philosophy. Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. Success is not something you pursue. It's something you attract. So the key to the better economic future is to become a, an attractive person with an attractive personality, a, an attractive list of skills your knowledge of the marketplace, your ability to deal with a variety of personalities, all of those things that anyone can learn with a bit of study, practice, repetition. So the key is, you cannot change the seasons, but you can change yourself. But let's talk about the seasons, just in a brief outline here. Number one is the winter time. I don't know where we've caught you this weekend, Maybe it's spring for you, maybe it's summer, you're toughing it out, maybe it's harvest, you're cashing it in. If we knew the story, we'd let you lecture. But maybe for some of you, it's one of those winter times, personal winters, social winters, economic winters, there's a variety. So what about the winter? Make this note, it always comes. So you gotta be prepared. Hopefully you've done your homework you're ready and prepared for this winter more than you were some others that have come into your life where you were less prepared. Make this note of a Bible story. It's very important because it's one of the great lessons of life. I'm an amateur on the Bible, but here's what the storyteller says. There were two nice people. So make the note now, two nice people, not one good and one evil, but two nice people. However, and that is the drama of life. However, two nice people. However, one built his house on the rock and the other built his house on the sand. Two nice people. Meaning it's possible for nice people to be casual it's possible for nice people to be careless. And sometimes you can be careless and lose your life. Not evil, just careless. In Los Angeles now, when the light turns green, if you're in your car and you're there at the intersection and the light turns green, you better not go.
for two or three seconds, waiting for the maniacs that are running the red light, crossing in front of you, even though the light is green. That little extra bit of caution, rather than being aggressive, little bit of caution could very well save your life. Here's a father who loves his family. He's an honorable citizen. He makes good money. He contributes to the community, his church. He's a good man. But this morning, he's in a hurry in Los Angeles, late for an appointment, and he's pushing it and pushing it with his automobile. He comes to the intersection, and the light turns red, and a little voice in his head says, go ahead, you're late. You can make it. And now he's dead. You don't have to go to Iraq to lose your life. You don't have to be evil to lose your life. All you have to be is a little careless at an unfortunate moment. So the key is to be not overcautious, but to be cautious. Don't build your house on the sand. Now add this note now, we're all tempted. When I was growing up, there was a cartoon of a little boy, and it showed this little boy with a little devil on one shoulder and a little angel on the other shoulder, both whispering in his ear. And the little devil said, go ahead and do it, it'll be okay. And the little angel says, no, 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 it won't be okay. Yes, go ahead and do it. No, no, no. How often does that occur for all of us? Every day. Go through the red light, it'll be okay. We must beware, okay? Not to be careless, not to be casual, and build your house on the sand. The same is true with your health. Don't build on the sand. The same is true with your career. Don't build on the sand. The same is true of being in business. Don't build on the sand, build on the rock. Because even nice people can make careless decisions, casual decisions that accumulate over a period of time. And those could be the winter. Now here's the note to make. Some winters are of your own making and some are not. Some are just the winter experiences. Maybe the whole country goes through it. It was a long time of winter for the Russians who lived through the communist system for about 80 years. Long winter of political despair, lack of freedom. But what's the key to the winter? Here it is in simple language, hang in there. I mean, you know, winters don't last forever. Some are difficult and some are easy, but they never last forever. The night always comes after the day, but it doesn't last forever, just a few more hours. And if you hang in there, say your prayers, gather a little strength, you can make it through the winter and the night. So winter time. Here's the next season now, the season of spring. Make this note, my definition of spring, opportunity. Spring is not a guarantee that you're gonna have a harvest, but it's an opportunity to plant one. It's not a guarantee that things are gonna go well and you will accumulate what you need, but it is an opportunity to do so. Springtime is opportunity. Now it's usually a very short season, especially where I was raised in farm country, Idaho. So here's what you must do with opportunity. Seize it quickly. Don't let it just come and go. When the window of opportunity is open to borrow a little space language, when they get ready to shoot the rockets or off into outer space, there's a window, they call it, of opportunity to go, not go, when the weather's right and whatever. But if, if you wait a little too long, the window closes and it takes a while for it to open back up. So this is the key. Take advantage of the spring, such a short season. In some places they got those big tractors with the lights on them going around the clock in the short season of spring to make sure that the seeds are planted. Take advantage of opportunity. Take advantage of opportunity to meet someone who could be a colleague for your future career. Take advantage of the day when it arrives because the day will soon finish. Take advantage of the year because it will soon close. Take advantage 
Now here's the next season. One of the greatest illustrations of life is in the third season, called the season of summer. And here it is in simple capsule form. In the summer, you must do two major things. Here they are for your notes. Number one, nourish and give life like a mother. Nourish and give life like a mother. Next, protect and defend like a father. This is called the work of summer. Give life like a mother. Take life like a father. Love like a mother. Hate like a father. Any father would say to whatever threatens his family, take two more steps toward this family, you'll cease to exist. I'm father. I protect, I kill if necessary. So you've got to nourish your garden. And then you've got to protect it by fighting the weeds and the bugs that are out to destroy it. As soon as you've planted, the busy bugs and the noxious weeds are out to take it. Now put this line in your notes, and they will take it unless you are extremely father-like and vigorous. You have to develop a hatred for evil. The old prophet said, love good and hate evil because those twin forces are at work always. Even in the beginning of the beginnings, Lucifer, according to the storyteller, tried to take over God's throne, didn't succeed, and so began the story of the creator and the spoiler. And so exists for all of us, this great drama of the ability to create, but the destroyer not too far away. In another seminar I give, here's what I say, and this is good philosophy. It seems like opposites are in conflict and we are in the middle. Evil on one side, good on the other side. Illness on one side, good health on the other side. Darkness on one side, light on the other side. And they're in conflict. If you walk into a room that's dark and turn on the light, the darkness disappears and goes away. How far away does it go? Not very far. Waiting for a chance, what? To come back in. Move in, take over the territory. As light begins to lose its energy, darkness moves in. There's a war on. It's, here's what it's called. Push, shove. As we sit here, right? Good health plan is trying to defeat illness and drive it into a small corner. If you don't work on your good health plan, illness will drive your health into a small corner. It's called push and shove. In your bloodstream, there are red corpuscles to nourish like a mother and white corpuscles to fight and kill like a father. Thank God for white corpuscles that think negative all day. <laughs> white corpuscles say, just show me some infection, I'll kill it. Because if I don't kill it, what? It kills you. White corpuscles say, it's my job today to make sure you don't get killed. So I'm here to fight. Have you got that now? Red to nourish, white to fight. So here's the key now. Cooperate with the positive side of this war of health and illness. What if in this struggle the body calls for a banana and you send it a Coca-Cola? And now the body has the right to say what? Whose side are you on? I'm working day and night to drive illness into a small corner and keep you healthy, and you keep sending me the wrong stuff. Come on, just a little cooperation here, and we can win this game. But see, if you don't do your push-ups. And what was that little voice in my hotel room this morning? that said to me, Jim Rohn, you don't have to do your exercises this morning. You're running a little late. And this little creature on this shoulder almost talked me into it. <laughs> and the little angel says what? No, 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 no. Fall on the floor one more time. Do those push-ups, a few crunches, a little modified version. Yes, because you are late, but you got to keep up the pace. See, that's called what? The work 
of summer. Here's what it's called, high drama. Nourishing and protecting. Nourishing with one hand and protecting with the other hand. Even the battle of the mind. Here's a good note to make on the battle of the mind. Don't become a victim of yourself in this battle of the mind. Should I, shouldn't I? Let it go. No, don't let it go. Run the red light. No, be a little more cautious. Think of your family. See, we, we have to continually do this. Beware of the thief on the street that's after your purse. But also beware of the thief in your mind that's after your promise. That little thief that says, you're too short, you're too tall, you're too old, you've never done it before. What makes you think you can do it now? Nobody in your family has ever done it. In fact, if you start, they'll all make fun of you. It's called the thief in the mind that steals the dream and steals the promise, makes you less effective than you should be. Here's what you must do, battle with the mind. Now, what's the purpose of all of this opposites in conflict? Here's what I think it is, to create high drama. God wishing it to continue on earth as it did in heaven. I guess that's the best conclusion I've come to. Because here's the last of this now. Would it be possible to win if you couldn't lose? And the answer is no, it doesn't seem like it. If you took a football today and put it under your arm and we went with you to the nearest football stadium, and with that football under your arm, if you walked across the goal line, would we call it a touchdown? And the answer is no, that's not a touchdown. It's not a touchdown until you face the 350 pounders that want to smash your face in the turf. And if you can muscle by them, and if you can dance past the secondary with the football under your arm, cross the goal line, now we call it a touchdown. And maybe you won the game and maybe you won the championship. So jot this down now. High drama is the order of the day. I guess so ordered by God himself. High drama. But that's what makes life so unique, so challenging, so much opportunity. A chance for fortune and a chance for failure. And you've got to defend yourself against one, see if you can't maximize the other. That's the game of life. Isn't this good stuff? I mean, these few simple ideas started changing my life. Age 25, I was never the same. What if you picked up a book? And the book, first chapter said, everything's fine. Uh, chapter two, uh, everything's fine. Uh, chapter three, everything is just fine. Uh, chapter four, everything is still just fine. Would you finish this book? And the answer was no. What kind of a book is this? So the book on your life story, it's not going to be this. It's going to be filled with the full dramas of the highs and the lows and the winter and the spring and the summer and the harvest. So have you got that now, the third season? Do the work of summer. Be both optimistic and vigilant. Two great words of antiquity, here they are. Number one is behold. It's the word from antiquity. The positive word is behold. Here's the other word, beware. One of the interesting bewares in the Bible is a little story that says, beware of the little foxes that are spoiling the vines. It doesn't look like it. You know, I come from, you know, farm country, Idaho, where I make a little wine and grow a few crops. And you can look at a vineyard, hey, it looks okay. But this old, old story says, just because the vineyard looks okay, you got to look a little closer. The little foxes may be eating the vines. So whether it's a personal relationship or a business opportunity or your future or your life or the management of your time or your health or whatever, I'm asking you to behold the possibilities and beware the dangers. That's the key. And all of that we call personal development. Okay, here's the next season now, the season of harvest. Make this note now on harvest. In due time, and for those who qualify, in due time, and for those who have obeyed this extraordinary law that says life was not designed to give you what you need, 
Life was designed to give you what you deserve. If you didn't plant in the spring, then no harvest comes your way. If you planted little, then you're not going to receive a lot. And here's the key now for the harvest. Number one, whatever it is, offer no complaint and no apology. If it's a fantastic har harvest, you offer no apology. If it's not much, you offer no complaint. That's the highest of maturity, no apology, no complaint. But here, here's what you can do no matter what it is. Go back to work in the spring. Because write this down now, spring always follows winter. If the harvest wasn't good and the winter was tough, the promise is another opportunity will come your way. Do wise things with your harvest. Build your financial security for you and your family on the rock and not on the sand. There's so many things now you can do about gathering resources and wisely investing them so that you and your family are secure. Here's one thing to strive to become early in your life and career, financially independent, so that nobody or nothing has a claim on your assets. Accomplish that as quickly as you can. Then all of the other wise things we'll talk more about. Sarah Alfaro in Mexico came to my seminars and lectures 10 years ago. Single mother, four children, no job, no home, no car, no money. And she only had one American dollar to invest. Now she makes about $40,000 a month and she's rich and now quite famous. Sarah Alfaro in Mexico. Here's what I taught Sarah back there 10 years ago. Don't buy the second car until you've bought the second house. It's not cars that makes you rich. It's houses that make you rich. If you bought a condo in Carmel just a few years ago for 250000 it's now worth $800,000. I got a call the other day from Sarah thanking me one more time for my training. And she said, Mr. Owen, you'll be happy to know I just finished paying off my third home here in Mexico, so today I'm going shopping for my third car. <laughs> Isn't that good? Unbelievable. Remember, how long ago was it when the idea finally dawned on somebody? If you paid one extra payment a year, on your 30-year loan, you could pay it off in 15 years and save more than the price of the house. Wow. Just a little bit of information and then a little discipline to see it through and the change for your harvest can be unbelievable. 